AMD Today announced its AMD RX 6600 XT at China Joy 2021. And this new card is priced at $380. It's supposed to compete with the NVIDIA RTX 3060, which is about $329, but there's a bit of uh, a performance gap according to AMD as well. The 6600 XT, critically, is a new smaller die. It's Navi 23 rather than Navi 21. And that means two main things. One is that the units per wafer will increase. And the other one is that the yield per unit will increase. So with those two things combined, in theory, the 6600 XT should be easier for AMD to make in abundance. So we're gonna be talking about this one today. We'll go over the specs, the pricing, some of the performance claims by AMD, and some of our expectations, and uh, as well as the basic information on uh, the launch date and partner models. Before that, this video is brought to you by Crucial, and it's Crucial X6 Portable SSD. We use these external SSDs all over the office for rapidly transferring games and files between systems. The X6 comes in 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte capacities with USB-A or USB Type-C for the cable. For a high speed and high capacity external drive from Crucial, click the link in the description below. We'll start with the basics. The AMD RX 6600 XT is the only one announced right now. There's been a rumor of a 6600 and a 6500 series card, but neither has been officially discussed at this point. So the 6600 XT MSRP is $380. Obviously partners can go up from that price. And uh, the release date is August 11th. We uh, at this point have heard rumors indicating launches of 65 or 6600 cards by end of year, but nothing official. So we can't really go off of those at this point. This will be a partner only launch as well. That means that AMD will not have its own reference card or Founders Edition card or whatever they want to call it. So there won't be an AMD branded cooler, AMD branded card on an AMD board that's sold as a 6600 XT. So uh, the partners should all be launching on the same day at the same time. There might be more models coming out later with more customizations to them, but custom PCBs are supposed to be available on day one. Sometimes this doesn't happen if partners don't have enough time to ramp where they'll rely on only the first party, that'd be AMD or Nvidia reference board to get cards and coolers out the door ASAP. So in this case, there should be custom boards available immediately. That means you can expect models with the usual options of things like dual VBIOS, larger VRMs, taller boards, cheaper VRMs, and coolers designed around those PCBs, like flow through models with cutouts in the PCB or shortened PCBs versus a longer cooler length. If you see any AMD branded 6600 XTs pop up, it's probably going to be an OEM solution, like from Dell or one of those companies where uh, OEMs will be able to work with an AMD reference board and reference shroud, but will have to source their own cooler from some other partner and then assemble the card through some other partner. But that'd be the only time you would see something like that. AMD expects roughly 15% more performance than a 3060 in some titles, but not all. And we'll validate these claims, obviously, once we get the card in and do our full review on it. Now, if it is a 15% bump, that's also roughly a 15% bump in price. So MSRP to MSRP, if that's all you're going off of, then the relative comparison maybe makes sense. We'll see how it performs in real life. Uh, and obviously our opinion of the 3060 would scale to the 6600 XT if the price scales equivalent to the performance. So that would give you an indicator of what we would think about it, but we'll need to see. AMD claimed that memory prices have doubled over the norm and used that as a sort of justification of some of its pricing and it said it was a driving factor for its pricing. And we've begun looking into this. We haven't been able to verify or contest this statement yet though. So we don't have anything to add to that. Onto the specs now, AMD's RX 6600 XT will run 32 compute units or CUs, which puts it at 2048 stream processors. There are 64 SPs per CU. Comparatively, the RX 6700 XT has 40 CUs or 2560 SPs, while the 6800 non-XT has 60 CUs and 3840 SPs. The 6800 XT runs 72 CUs and 4608 stream processors. AMD did not provide a base clock spec for the 6600 XT at this time, but it did note a 2359 megahertz boost clock. Cache is 32 megabytes, which AMD says was tuned specifically for running on a 128-bit bus with optimization for hit rate during 1080p gaming specifically. Memory is eight gigabytes of GDDR6 with power expectations at 160 watts on a single eight pin. But of course the board partners can boost that higher with a custom VBIOS if they want to. AMD noted its power supply requirement guidance will be 500 watts total. Back to the die size, that's really the, the critical part of all of this. 
the die size we were able to confirm directly with AMD is 237 millimeters squared for the 6600 XT. For perspective, and maybe we could put a shot of this on the screen from our teardown at some point, the 6800 XT is a 520 millimeter squared die size. That's a massive difference in the area of the wafer that's being used. And if things work as they normally do, then it means more units per wafer again, better yield per unit. So at this point, it becomes a question of where does the supply come from? Uh, when companies like AMD or NVIDIA, who don't own their own fabs, are buying from a supplier like TSMC, they have a wafer supply agreement, or a WSA, that is normally dictated uh, year by year, sometimes quarter by quarter. And so with the WSA, there's, there's no room to scale. You can't go to TSMC and say, hey, this month we're going to need more, because TSMC will say, we don't have that. It's all sold out. So what that means is AMD is going to have to allocate supply, obviously, from other products it makes. Maybe some of them are winding down, and it has the supply available. Maybe it has enough CPUs right now, and it doesn't need to make as many. In those instances, then you still have good GPU output, and you can make both old and new. Or maybe they have to pull it from something like a 6800 XT and get more units per wafer, uh, but sacrifice some of the higher end. So we don't have details. This isn't the type of thing that companies ever share with media on how they make those decisions or what decision they made. But the die size is, is significantly different here. It's much smaller. Uh, and in theory, lines them up for being able to make more. But demand will also be higher for a card that's relatively on the low side of pricing right now for what's available uh, in this current generation from both parties. So paying $380 for a card that is marketed at 1080p doesn't feel great in 2021. There have been a lot of cards that can do 1080p for a long time at lower prices, but uh, AMD has one change to this particular marketing this time, which is that it's been pushing high refresh 1080p. So AMD spent a lot of time pointing out the increase in display sales at 120 hertz and 240 hertz and beyond at 1080p and noted that this segment of the market was growing fast. And so that's how it's marketing the device. We suspect the 6600 XT should be able to handle 1440p gaming as well. Maybe not the highest settings, but uh, we'll see how it scales. The cache will matter here. The memory capacity is fine for 1440p. So we'll test it out, see how it goes. In its slides, AMD tried to suggest that old GPUs need an upgrade, highlighting the GTX 1060. Although we'll also note that AMD's own FSR recently leveraged the 1060 in the opposite way, saying that you can stick with it and use FSR. This marketing makes AMD's language choices uh, and card comparison choices a little bit mismatched, maybe disingenuous at worst. But uh, the 1060, it was used as a means to promote FSR. Now it's being used as a means to suggest that you need to replace it with a new AMD device. And as a reminder, our advice is to always avoid getting caught up in the buying craze or the hype over a new product coming out just because it's new and it's coming out uh, if you're happy with your computer. So AMD has a point in both instances. You don't need to replace a 1060, and you can use new technologies to try and help it along. And also, a 1060 is getting old, and maybe it is time to replace it. Both can be true. So the way to look at this is simple. It's if you're happy with how your system performs today, keep using it. No reason to spend money, no reason to, uh, to retire old devices that still work fine by your current standards and, uh, and produce more e-waste anyway. Uh, however, if you're unhappy with it, either it is affecting your ability to enjoy your computer and your gaming or whatever your hobby is, uh, or it is affecting your productivity and you use your computer for work, which makes you money, then it's probably time to replace it. So just our quick reminder for everyone, whenever we go through a launch cycle, we, we like to try and bring back that perspective of reality. We'll look at a couple of Andy's performance claims here. We don't share too many first party benchmarks. Uh, since we're going to be looking at this device anyway, and we'll provide our own look at it in a third-party test lab, but we'll share a few of them. AMD is expecting to compare most directly to the RTX 3060. It appears to believe this is a favorable comparison right now. It has a benchmark with both devices using rebar, and AMD is claiming an uplift in most, but not all, titles. AMD also showed a closer battle between the two when tested in what it calls esports titles. So that'd be games like Dota 2, CSGO, Apex Legends, Rainbow Six, and so forth. Valorant was on there. And so that gets you pretty much up to speed on the news of the 6600 XT. It's not that complicated of a launch. 
This is an existing architecture. We don't really have anything to go into detail on architecturally because it's been out, it's been tested by us and many others, and uh, it's well documented at this point what RDNA2 is and what you can expect from it. So the only thing here is, is a, a functionally a product level announcement. There are not going to be AMD cards, uh, and so the reviews from everybody are probably going to look at slightly different cards. AMD is probably handling the sampling for that, but uh, normally when AMD or NVIDIA have a partner launch, they have multiple boards to send out to reviewers, and um, we'll do our best to request one close to MSRP, but we'll see what we get. So that's the plan right now. We'll do a review as soon as uh, we're able to post one. We do not have the card yet, but in theory should be getting one. August 11th for the release date, and keep an eye out for the review. Subscribe so you can catch that when it's up. We'll do a full look at thermals, performance, gaming, and everything else, and uh, that should get you a good idea of whether it's worth buying or not. Thanks for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly by grabbing one of our mouse mats, bar runners, mod mats, or other items, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, and we'll see you all next time.